All right, let's look. Uh, let's look. Let's look at a, a, the second cycle here. A whole lot of green. Green's high in value. Not ridiculous, but it's the highest, I think, by far. Um, I have a lot of them. I have bonuses for green. I could buy more green. But I think what I'm going to do, yeah. Okay. I am the white player. I only have 10 bucks. That's not enough to buy green. It's actually not enough for me to buy red either. This is problematic. Um, I could sell off a couple of greens and cash in on them to start working with my reds. I could look for a die to help make a decision here because basically I can't change my money and the greens have, eh, they haven't really gained value, but a lot of other stuff has been hurt. Of course, that guy's holding a lot of red, so I'm kind of not thrilled with helping him. But I can't buy anything without selling. <laughs> well, that's not true. I can buy yellows. Screw me, man. Yeah. What did I say? Uh, Ten bucks. I buy a pair of yellows. That puts me in the running if he ends up playing yellows for anything. Now that makes this kind of iffy. But I can hold that to sell. And I'll play this. Now I'm completely out of money. <laughs> but that's okay. I'm using the boat to mark where I am, but I'm not not going to move it now. Once I start doing that, I feel like I have to do it continuously. And we draw a card. Oh, we get to hurt red some more. That's kind of cool. Okay. Uh, over here. I have lots of goodies on red. I got baddies for green and yellow. Who do I feel is doing the best? Well, yellow's not doing all that well. So I'm going to put a baddie out for green. But what am I going to do with my money? Hey, it's always hard for me to remember how... In a way, it doesn't matter. I could play this and then make my purchase. It's not like it makes any effect on anything. So I have a bunch of reds. Reds are okay. Um... I have a pile of money. I don't want anything but red, though. So red we will buy for 23 bucks, which puts us down to 14. Now there's some opportunity, like in a lot of the kind of player interaction Kinesia games, for people to be working together in a weird sort of way. Brings me over here. Now he's heavily invested in green, but again, he's behind someone else. I don't like this. I don't like being above in green. Green's going down in value. I have all these green cards. Hmm. If I sell to green, I get 31 bucks. Puts me up to here. And now I could do something bad. To green. And now I have something to focus on, maybe. Puts me to this guy. He's just holding yellows. Uh, he's up here. He has a shitload of cash. Might as well buy more yellows, man. 18 bucks. How do I have so much money? Um, I know it's right because I was commenting on some of that before. 
That gives me 31. Am I going to get three plays? I don't know. I'm holding my dividends because if I can play multiple dividends at once, uh, in one cycle, I can get better than a buck per. But that's kind of hard for one player to manage. We get back over here. Stupid boat. <laughs> it's confusing me. Uh, I draw a green bear, which is a good thing. What's his deal? He's seeing green tanking in price, and he's not really able to do a hell of a lot about it uh, with the hand he has. I'll play one of these. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve off blue. If you go negative, it is actually tracked and you have to sell stuff off uh, to equate that. We'll look at that. It's a special rule. I have to play again because I played one of these. I could hit yellow. Don't want to do that. I have yellow. Don't want to play reds. I don't have reds yet. What did I do? Did I do anything? I didn't do anything yet. Why don't I sell my yellows? 18 bucks. Uh, these are kind of annoying. <laughs> I would much rather just have counters. 18 bucks for white. I didn't make a hell of a lot off my yellows. I played that, that was a fee. I play this, this is another fee. Two, three, four, five, six, twelve bucks off for red. Ha ha ha. And since I'm holding all my greens still here, and I have a little bit of cash, I'll play this. I fill out my hand. I got a lot of control over the board with those two fees cards. And now I have some interesting options coming over here. Lots and lots of reds. Not a hell of a lot of cool shit that I can do with red. Red is going down in value here. I could neutralize that. Um, I'm out of money. <laughs> it might be worth me saying screw it and I'll, I'll, I'll blank these out because I don't have any cash at all. I can pass in terms of what I do. I could play fake news on this. Am I terribly worried about Yellow's holdings? Eh, he just got hit with a fee. Got a couple of anti-yellow cards. I, I have nothing I can do with my money. I'm gonna throw some div, uh, I, I have no money. I'm gonna throw some dividends out to see what happens. Oh, these should have been shuffled in. I don't think it makes a difference. Does it? <sighs> yeah, it does. The discards should have been shuffled in. Fuck couple of reasons they need to be shuffled in. One of them is the deck's just not big enough to handle a round of cards around uh, if there's a significant number of them out of it. But the other is to balance out and make sure that each, each deck of cards consists of all the cards so that you have the same kind of variance. Yes, I screwed things up by not shuffling them in. It meant that people who discarded stuff kept it out of play a little longer. But there's not much I can do about it at this point. Black has tons and tons of money. What do they have that they can control? Well, I can do a lot for green, but I've been selling off greens. Green currently is going down in price a little bit. I would rather not screw with that. Um, I don't particularly want to buy reds. I'm going to play this. 
to screw with his reds. I'm going to sell my two greens for another 27 bucks. I'm not thrilled. I, it, it's weird because you're, you're constantly working off of like what the expectations are built up along here rather than anything else. And now I keep collecting good shit for green. I do have a breaking news that I could cancel out some of that good shit. At least there's that. Go back here. He's got a load of yellow. Yellow right now is moving up a little bit. I'm the red player. I have cash. I have a lot of goodies for yellow. Do I have enough cash that I can buy a yellow? I have enough cash that I can buy two yellows. That's 18 bucks. That leaves me with one left. <laughs> As I collect more of these, I'm making yellow look really, really sweet. And we're going to make it a lot sweeter here. I'm going to always forget to draw a card at the end. We go here, or refresh hand. He's still got a load of greens. Green is not looking great. Red is looking good if I play for it. But if I don't, it's not looking good, so I'd rather see that kind of dip. Um, yellow could be shit. I think I'm going to cash in my greens, because nobody else is holding them. Nobody's going to help them, and the best I can do is kind of make them only lose a little bit of money. This is painful because I'm still holding shares of it. Uh, 23, 30, 41. But maybe I cashed in enough already. Who am I worried about? Uh, I don't know, all these yellows. It's going up a fair amount. Why don't we just send yellow back down into the crapper? We get a penalty for green. Getting towards the end here, I got decent stuff for red, but red's heading the wrong way. Uh, I've got another dividend for ye red. I could crush yellow. You don't necessarily need to, like this is one of those games where hurting other people may be good enough, right? You don't need to make money on it to feel anything good, I guess. Uh, I don't have anything that says any holdings are particularly good. Nothing on the board looks particularly good. I'm actually going to sell some reds. Now, of course, this drops the value of my reds. It's like an 18xx game or any other game where you have enough stock to affect things. You can't hold... Holding a partial, like, holding in a company is kind of bad. So being this invested in something, it becomes very hard to sell things off because you're going to hurt your own profits by doing so. Um, and I did play my dividend already. Do I want to put another dividend out? I'm not going to get a, a, enough to make it really all that valuable. So I'm going to sell some of these off. That gets me 23 bucks. I'm not happy with my position. I feel like my draws and whatnot have been really crappy. Um, what do I want to hurt? This is powerful no matter what. This is only powerful if there's a big plus out there. I'm going to play a breaking news or faking news. Yeah, But I wouldn't have been able to play two of these anyhow. That, that's one of the things. You can't really control your cards all that much. Over to this guy. He has no holdings whatsoever, tons of money. What's my situation? It's my situation. Yellow is interesting and still relatively cheap. I could play that up. Green has gotten a whole hell of a lot cheaper. Now it's currently playing at minus three. I could fake news that which is very powerful and have it stay even and at least take advantage of this. I have a lot of green cards in my hand. 
I think this is my best move. The other option is to buy some yellows and utilize my yellow card. But I think this is a good move. Uh, but let's buy a couple of greens. And that is 23 bucks I have to spend. Which puts me here. No restriction, you know, you can buy, you can sell something, you can buy it back uh, as things move around. It doesn't really help you uh, because you're generally not, you're, you're generally actually paying a premium on each transaction you make, which is very realistic, actually. Uh, the fees that you pay end up being a small premium. Let's look at this guy with his hordes of yellow. How bad off is he? He's got a plus two right now. He's got a minus three. It's current, and if I had a, a fees, this would be great. I could play that and uh, levy a penalty on people. I have money. I have 23 bucks. 23 bucks is just enough to buy the rest of the yellows up. Well, not the rest. And drop a plus three on there. And that will actually gain me some value, I guess. <laughs> we draw a card. We come around to here, and he is looking at... Greens are going minus two, zero. Greens have kind of become okay again. <laughs> It's his fault. Um, oh, he didn't draw a card. He should have had the other one, but screw it. I don't really care. Like the fact that somebody drew before him. I mean, the deck is just as random either way. So this is the last play of the game, uh, of the turn. I get to drop this if I want, and I could pay a penalty that I don't want to play. Um, I could go for reds. How are reds doing? Reds are currently at minus three. They don't seem like a good buy. I can't change them that much. I am going to buy 27 bucks worth of greens, I guess. Right? Does that put me too invested in green? It overinvests me compared to him, which means when I put the, the good card down, it helps me. 27 sounds like 14, huh? And then I play this. That fills in our loop. I draw another card. I could have played this fees first, but then I wouldn't get an immediate play. And I think the turn passes. I'm not sure about that. Like, I'm not sure that there's anything that covers that. Okay. Let's start ditching cards. Uh, breaking news. Those can go away. Uh, let's see what yellow does. Cancels. Unimportant. Yellow goes up by two. That's one, two. Leapfrogging. Green. Cancels. Up by two. One, two. Green continues to grow in value. That's nice for him. Oh, let's put the boat here because it'll be his turn. Red. Red. Well, let's take a look. First minus three for red. One. I kind of like the stock market, uh, the way the manipulation works. There's a lot I like about this game. I, I don't know quite what it's doing, though. I'm trying to get a grasp on it. He gets four bucks, putting him up to a mighty six. He only has four shares of a stock that's currently worth four or six bucks. Uh, he's really not doing well. His investments have put him at the bottom of, of the rows of, of people. If we take a look at him, he's got a couple of shares of, of the greens. That puts him up in around 90 bucks. Um, if we look at... This guy, he has five shares, 50, 60, 70, 80. 
about 95 bucks. So green is being a big winner. And him, he just has shitloads of stocks. Two, four, six, eight, ten. He looks like he's around 150. <laughs> so right now, yellow is managing the best situation. And it's time to shuffle the deck, allow people discards, and try to remember to reshuffle. I did play this before. Um, I didn't video it, so my guess is that my wife and I played it and gave it a shot. And I was intending to video it, and it just kind of didn't happen. We're over here first. I have a whole shitload of reds. Now, I may not want to ditch this in there because this is a minus two to the company that I've got uh, stuff in. That could hurt me. But on the other hand, I just don't think that it's doing me that much good. Honestly, none of this shit is doing me all that much good. A plus one in red is pretty minor. Dividends, they're too hard to get out. This minus three on yellow, he's in the lead. I'll hold on to that because I want to hurt him. Wow. <laughs> Well, this doesn't work out either. <laughs> I don't think anybody's going to hurt my red holdings. I'm losing the game, man. Um, over to this guy, greens. Somebody else has too many greens. I can't win the green race, can I? I really can't. Which means I may want to play in yellow, but I can't win the yellow race either. The only thing I could win is the red race. I ditch everything. I've got a fair amount of cash to play with. I can use a whole new hand. Not looking good. I was hoping to draw a bunch of reds or, or something. You know, to be able to top him in terms of his value and buy up all the reds and shoot their valuation up. What about him? I got two dividends for yellow. Green, I'm not worried about red. Green is definitely of interest, putting a penalty on green. I don't know if minus two's enough. I don't know if these dividends are enough. But we'll do this. We're really playing to try to protect our position. This is very helpful, because we, we are in the lead right now. Speaking of which, I have lots of bonus on red. Lots of penalty on green. I'm not convinced that dividends are worth shit. Like, you have to be working with someone else for them to, to be valuable. Red looks pretty good. I can smack green so I can sell off my greens uh, before I smack it. Um, might buy other stuff. Certainly reds are worth buying. They're very cheap. But, it's an actions thing. So like, I want to buy the cheap reds before I buy anything else. Time to reshuffle, then we go back over here. I'm trying to convince myself to go out and get a, a, a replacement Zippo. I don't know that the bar hasn't collected it up. I don't tend to ask, hey, can you look or whatever, until I get there. <laughs> Just feels weird to me. Let's see, is this actually done? Yeah, that's good. Um, but, uh, I'm very, uh, I don't know, Raid is being demanding again. They're doing a, a fusion that I kind of could want to play a lot in. And I'm just so unable to be motivated. You know, a couple hour walk, I can afford it, right? In terms of like, but it's just weird. Anyway, we're back here. This is the last time around. What do we got? We got hurt green, which could cause people to divest. But here's the thing. If you're the only person holding shares of your stock, a, other people playing cards on it, like the idea of the market kind of being influenced and whatnot, it just doesn't do that much. It's not gonna affect your price that much. Whereas if I were to drop you know, this minus two, one of these minus twos or something on the board, and a lot of, and the stocks were kind of equally split, people might dump them. But I have the feeling that people are gonna concentrate and try to get control so that they can win with the stocks that they have, the actions that they're gonna play on. 
Uh, can't do shit with yellow except hurt it. I would like to hurt it. What do I have? I have almost no money. I have cheap red stocks that might go up in value. I am not going to do anything. I'm just going to drop this and draw a card and say I'm not happy about life. Uh, nothing good is happening for me. Okay. Feels like my reality. This guy. I have a bonus for green. I have a bonus for yellow, but that's not good for me. I have a penalty for red. That doesn't help me. <sighs> Best I can do, I think, is to pay the 38 bucks. Um, so that's 26. And I'll put this out as an offering. I get a card. Yay, I get to hurt red. You know. <laughs> All right, over to this guy. Tons and tons of yellows. I can bonus red. Very little I can do that'll help me. I am a red player. I have things that help yellow. I have defenses for yellow. I can bring my yellow stock value up. But do I want to protect things with red? I have advantages on red. Let me play this first. What a dicky move. That's eight bucks off of blue. Blue is going to be at negative two. They have to resolve that, I believe, on their next turn. The player's money falls below zero on his next turn, he will have to sell stocks in order to do something. Um, I have to play another card. I'm going to play a yellow dividend. And I am going to buy, do I want to buy two reds or do I want to buy a red and a yellow. The red and a yellow would cost me 21 bucks, which is almost all my money. I'll buy two reds for 14. Which might leave me enough room for another red after he sells off. I have played both of these. So I get two cards. This isn't bad. It means somebody else doesn't have it in their hand. You know? um, over here. Big penalty on green. Not thrilled with that. Big bonus on red. Thrilled with that. I am the white player. I don't have a shitload of money. This would cost me 21 so I'm going to sell a green and buy a red. That gives me 10 bucks, giving me a little bit more flexibility. Hey, what am I doing with it? Um, I could actually play this breaking news over here for no effect. Uh, put this out as an offering. I get another one. That's interesting. Come back around to him. He's screwed. I can only sell two of my reds at once anyway. If I am dumping reds, <laughs> I just feel so screwed by everything. So I will dump the value of red because I'm pissed off at people who played me. I get 18 bucks. I'm minus two. I go to 16. And I'm pissed at him, who's the guy I could actually, you know, bonus along with myself. Well, now I can bonus greens, conceivably. Yeah, I don't know if I have enough money to do so. Maybe I'll just hurt everyone and try to drag them down to my level. All right, this guy has piles of green. 
He actually has as many green as he does. I have a little bit more cash, but he's got a red and I don't. Which means... <laughs> What do I want to do? It's 42 bucks there. Greens are not going up much. I could play in the red market along with everyone else, but I could fuck the red market, which feels more appropriate. <laughs> um, yellow is too monopolized. I'm going to buy me a green for 20. Take the advantage of owning the majority of green. And I'll play that and we'll see what happens. Come over here. He's got shitloads of yellow. Nothing bad has happened to yellow. Something bad has happened to yellow. We don't want bad things to happen to yellow. Uh, do we have any money though? We have nine bucks. I could keep buying red. We have one buck. And yeah, if we could fire off those two dividends for yellow, that would actually be pretty big. That might be bigger than buying those, those reds up. All right, over to here. Oh, I've got a lot of goodies on red. I got a lot of bad. I got a baddie on green. <sighs> green is being benefited here. Fuck. Uh, um, I have a lot of cash. I could just buy some reds and try to improve them. Hold on to my greens and say, you know what? If somebody else is helping it, that's fine. Or I could sell a green and buy a red. Two reds cost me 21 bucks. What do I want to do with that? Get rid of minus two. That's not the best thing in the world. Put a dividend out. That would be two bucks per. This is two bucks per. I don't know which one I like better. The dividend would be one buck per in addition to that, but it could get bigger. Mm, okay. <laughs> I don't know. We draw a card. Oh, another dividend. I should have played the dividend. Who knows? The plus two was worth more for me, but I don't know. Okay. Over here. This guy has a couple of red. He has... 16 bucks to play with. He could screw around in green. Doesn't have the cash for it. Um, reds are currently breaking even. Can't do much with them. I really just don't want to play. <laughs> like, there's nothing good. I am pissed at the guy who played yellow. I'm going to put this out and just say, screw you, man. I was doing poorly enough, and then you, you hurt me worse. But it was to his advantage, I think, uh, to make sure more got dumped. Over here, he's holding a bunch of greens. Green is currently moving at plus two. Huge? Not really. Do I have too many greens? People have been buying them. Maybe I could sell some. What could I do? Everybody else holds reds. I don't like that. What do I have in cash? I have no cash. I can't buy anything. If I just play this and say screw you all, I can be a little happy. Coming over here, anything good I can do in yellow is good for me. Um, I have no money. A red is not going to get me any additional money out of yellow. I'm just going to play this 
and improve my positioning. Over here, white has no money. I have holdings in red and green. He's got a lot of holdings in green. I'm worried about this guy. I don't know what I can do about him. Not much. I have all these red briefcases. Those would be valuable if I could buy up a lot of that, but I don't have money. I'm going to exchange a green at 20 for a red at 12. That gets me eight bucks. I don't really want to ditch green. Not really thrilled with this because it helps him, but it helps everybody except the guy who has more greens, but whatever. We're at the end, so it doesn't really matter. This last player has to end things. Speaking of which, he's just on a fuck you all move. I have 16 bucks. Reds are going up in value. About even. They're producing some dividends. Can I afford a red? It's 13 bucks for red. I'll buy one red. That helps other people more than me, but whatever. And I'll play the one thing that hurts everybody here. Now it's time to switch batteries. <laughs> what I wanted to say is now it's time to calculate the final uh, situation. We go through the final scoring uh, round of this. This can go away, this can go away. Do yellow first, I guess. Get a minus two. I think these are valued at 13 at the end, not 12, but we'll look. All right. Um, and yellow will pay out dividends. There's only two cards, so that's two bucks per. He's got them all. Two, four, six, eight, ten. He gets 20 bucks. Big payout. Let's look at green. Let's cancel. Green pays one buck in dividends out. It's three bucks to the white player. And one, two, three, four, five to the black player. Red. Cancels out, cancels out, a buck of dividends, three bucks to red, four bucks to white, three bucks to blue. All right. Now we score the stocks, right? Each player sells one stock per turn in turn order. Who finished this? Oh, shit, I don't remember. I think he did, actually. I don't remember. <laughs> I got no clue. All right, I think he did, though. Which means this guy goes first. So, we just start selling them off. We d actually don't value them. That's, that's the deal. You sell them off. So they're worth less and less each time. 18 puts me to 29. This is mechanically kind of annoying. There are no yellows out there, so I'll sell a red because I'm going to get my value for my yellows no matter what. So that's 13 bucks, which puts me to 36. Over here, there are greens and there are reds, and I don't know which one is worth more. Uh, I want to sell reds because I want to hurt him more than I want to hurt him. So I get 12 bucks for white. I'm going to continue through this mechanism. It's not too exciting. 11 bucks for blue. And I'll come back with the finals. Um, I wanted to stop here briefly. This guy sold off a green. Could have sold a red for two bucks, but the rest of the reds are going to be two bucks. In addition to that, 
I want to hurt the guy who's in green. This guy is, is of no consequence in this game. Kind of funny is you'd never have a situation like this where everybody's just selling everything off and the prices are dropping. Um, so I valued this guy at like 150 bucks, but he wasn't there because he's got to sell each one off and these are going to very quickly go down in value. They hadn't increased in value the way the greens say had. So things are closer than I thought. Not all that close. Because he had a lot of shares. So he ended up at 109. The next closest was 84 for black up here, 78 for white. <sighs> Dominating a color can be very valuable, but people can hit you pretty hard with it. It's really hard for me to get a grasp on what I want to say about this game. I'm not even sure I can reasonably review it. Uh, I'm intrigued by it. I'm intrigued by it. It's one where I believe um, the player interactions and perceptions and whatnot are going to drive the valuations. And the valuations are going to change. So they change from two things. One from the cards that people are playing and how, <coughs> and how uh, you know, someone's interest in a particular stock or interest in hurting someone else's holdings in a stock uh, are, are just driven by the card play set side of things. But as the cards come out, they create perceptions of value. The problem that I had with it was this sort of um, tendency of players to consolidate in a particular color so that they could control it and make sure that no one else was able to beat, was able to fuck with their color too much. So this guy managed to get a big bonus because people weren't getting a lot of hurt yellow cards, and they were holding on to all the yellow cards and using them to either propel their price upward, or they pretty much were able to keep their price stable. Is I guess the big key. And they were able to make gains by purchasing shares of, of the stock uh, over the course of the game and, you know, being able to get the investments or whatever. Of course, the fees could end up outweighing the investments. So if everybody's like, wow, you're definitely ahead, they can bring you down. We just didn't see that. Um, but that consolidation of stocks into one person's hand, like one, one uh, sector into one player's hand, feels a little weird and it feels like it um, damages the intention behind the game. Now, I rated this like a five off my first playing. I don't think it's it, it deserves that low. I'm probably gonna go up to about a six because I'm not really sure it works, right? In terms of like how accurately does it portray anything? Hey, it actually does some interesting shit in terms of the market, right? I'm not gonna say that it's, um, it's generating any kind of realistic view of the market overall, but it does some cute stuff where each, and, and, and stuff that I think games that try to model the market more explicitly, things like Maxi Bors, fails at. Um, Maxi Bors just ends up silly because you have too much power. Uh, basically, the players set the prices amongst themselves and amongst what they want to bid for it. And there's kind of these external reasons why the prices get moved where they are. Uh, you can look at my video on that. This, this comes out a lot more realistic feeling about big spenders, big, big stock holding uh, portfolios. You know, if you're talking about uh, something like uh, some of the bigger funds or stuff, if they wanted to play around, and they do. <laughs> Trust me, they do. Uh, and they do play around. Not just they want to. They actually do. They fuck around with stuff. That was part of what GameStop uh, <laughs> revealed. Um, if, if, if you want to play around with the valuations and whatnot, this actually represents that kind of nicely. Because by buying a share... The next share sold is going to go at the same value that you bought. That, that's very close to what, it, what, what things uh, work at. <sighs> Outside of like, you know, Elon Musk coming in and saying, I value this at $44 a share, 
even though the market values it differently. Something other than a, a corporate takeover or, or, or a buyout attempt is generally not, I bid tremendous amounts of money on something. Rather, it's this incremental buying shares uh, and, and driving the price up. And sure, you have a limit as to how high you're willing to go, but you just keep buying until you hit that limit. What feels a little weird is the limitation on how many shares you can buy and sell in a turn. Because honestly, you can manipulate the market as much as you like, you know, if you have the cash to do so, if you're fluid enough to do so. You can buy and sell stuff however much you like. There's very little control over that. But for a game, it needed that control because otherwise, if there's an opportunity, someone can use their, can, can leverage their position entirely based on their cards. So it prevents the holdings from shifting too quickly. They, they, they would end up with somebody holding an entire sector immediately when they had a good hand for that sector. And nobody else would be prepared for that, right? So they just, whoever the first player is who has a really powerful hand in one sector would dump all their shares in everything else and move them into that sector. So that, that, that would be a screwed up uh, situation. So it kind of had to be that way. Um, there, there's an interesting interplay between the, the perceptions and, and the valuations and Something that feels a little less realistic, but it actually is realistic when you go to the high end uh, of the investments, which is, I want to make sure nobody's doing better than me. The real big players kind of feel that way. They're playing a game with money at that point. They're not, you know, trying to invest or whatever to uh, secure their future. Their future is so fucking secure for generations down the line when, when you have the kind of money to play at this level. So what it really just comes down to is I want to beat the, the odds. I want to look better. I want to I be the big winner. I want to get on the magazines. Whatever, whatever that is. Whatever it is that drives them. I want you know, my 30th mansion. Whatever the fuck that is that drives them. I want to go to moon. I want, to, you know, I want a bigger, bigger space dick than everybody else. Whatever it is, it's just crazy game stuff, right? So in a way, the concept of beating the competition does make sense in this kind of game. In a way that it kind of doesn't for a corporation, right? Uh, for corporations, they're not that interested in beating the competition usually, except for in cases where they're trying to seize a monopoly. Anyway, I think there's something very interesting in this. Component-wise, I found these kind of obnoxious. I would have rather had little little counters. Uh, these knock over too easily. Yeah, I understand. People like plastic bits and all that. I'm just not thrilled with them. The cards are good, you know. Cards have improved so much. The board is fine. There's just nothing going wrong with it. Um, these, again, I wish these weren't, weren't these big plastic pieces that fall over. It makes it better for little children because, you know, I guess these things taste better than cardboard or something when you're trying to choke on a, on a, on an object. Uh, no, I, I have no idea. I have no idea why the plastic pieces are more appealing, you know, Uber play, Little wooden cylinders or something would probably be better too. These are just really kind of obnoxious pieces. Um, but yeah, and I don't feel like this is at all helpful to people who watch The Motley Fool, right? Which is more of a personal investment type thing. This kind of game doesn't reflect the kind of stuff that's being represented in those investment shows. Those investment shows are maybe for somebody who's trying to make money, but, well, they're certainly for people who are trying to make money and trying to kind of beat the odds better than they, they would through, through big, um, you know, through broad, broad, uh, broad investment strategies that just, you know, say something like, let me just throw everything into an, uh, an indexed fund or let me put everything into a, into a fund that is managed. Um, Although the generality of, of the sectors and whatnot, again, that kind of doesn't go with that investment. You know, that doesn't go with the theory of investment that something like these investment shows, the business shows, tend to uh, reflect. They tend to reflect, hey, here's 
a stock that I'm pumping, you know? And it, it really, I, I, I don't know about this particular show, but I gotta tell you, these investment shows that are like pushing one, one thing or another, uh, they are really suspect, right? And some of them have been caught basically just flat out lying about, you know, how good something is. And there doesn't seem to be any cost to it in a sense that if you were to call someone, just cold calling from, from a boiler room or something and pumped a stock, or if you pumped it on the internet possibly, uh, the way that these shows do, you would actually be liable, uh, possibly criminally and certainly civilly, uh, for what you've done. And these shows are allowed to, to operate this way. I, I find them completely, like, kind of sickening <laughs> what, what they're allowed to do. Uh, anyway, that's enough for this video. What do I say about the game? I, I say it's worth studying and playing around with, you know, and, and you know, try, trying to find, uh, trying to find because it's going to be based, and a lot of Kinesia games are based on this, on the player interaction and the player perceptions of valuations and stuff like that. Just like his auction games are, just like a, a, lot, of, a lot of his designs are. There's something very clever going on here. Does it really work? I don't know yet. I don't know. Um, like with a lot of his games, you really have to play it a lot more than I, I did right here.